Where I lived in Chalfont, it was more farmland. I was always a climb trees kind of kid, and so this was a perfect place for me. It gave me a great appreciation for the landscape, a great reverence for the landscape. I was working in the business world, and when I had a disagreement at work, an ethical disagreement, I was asked to leave, and someone told me that you know this was a great opportunity. I was 40 years old. This was the last chance I'd have to really break out and make a new life for myself, create the career I wanted. I applied to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts because it's the best. When I had first attended, I thought I was going to be a portrait painter, and when I came out of it, my feeling was I was going to be an everything painter. I was going to paint what I was responding to. This is a continuum where everything evolves and I feed off of what came before. Even something like my trips where I go up to Maine, to Jonesport. I had found this town on the Maine coast that was old world. Essentially the fishing village that every painter wants to find. The first year I did a multiple painting series and I kind of fell in love with the town. I've been there 10 or 11 times so far. When I go up, I say, what do I want to make sure I have in this great body of work? Because there's a lot of paintings now from up there. But I also say, what does it mean to me now in my career and how do I portray that, and it's becoming less of them and more of me. His paintings are fresh. It's as if the moment just happened. When I first knew him, almost all of his work was plein air, and he would stand for between four and five hours and paint a painting nonstop. Well, you know, as he got older, as he became more graceful, he began to spend more and more time in the studio. But even that, I feel that there's an immediacy to the painting. I'm very conscious of not finding myself in a position where I will say, I wish I had. I don't want to say, I didn't do it. Yeah, that's good.